On an eighth win in 10 games on their home floor saw Stephen Curry's 36 piece get the new year flowing. Seven double figure scores, which included every starter, featured Jonathan Kaminga's 11th start of the year, plus both Trace Jackson Davis and Chris Paul's second consecutive start. JK and TJD combined to match the Magic as a team in blocks, swatting a pair of shots each. And while nothing set in an ever-changing Steve Kerr rotation, CP becoming a starter again seems to have gifted the 38-year-old out of Wake Forest with new life. Clay Thompson recorded a game third most 15, plus Wiggs, Loon, and Pods resembled a formidable trio off the bench by combining to outscore Orlando by 24 when they were on the court. Entering a rematch with the reigning champion Denver Nuggets, things are anything but perfect for a team that won the chip the year before those Nugs in the 16 wins, 17 loss dubs. Nevertheless, let's appreciate a patented masterclass from the chef before breaking down how Golden State may be starting to find a flow in their home gym. Keep it here. Of course, your boy D-Flow breaks down the most intriguing NBA stories, teams, and players on a regular basis. However, according to YouTube's analytics, just 10.9% of you watching right now are subscribed. Please subscribe and splash notifications if you haven't already. Thank you the world for supporting my channel. So despite casuals confidently claiming that he's washed up, Steph's NBA 7th most 635 plus point scoring performance in the 2023-24 campaign consisted of Wardell also snatching a season most 4 steals. Curry would also tally what was tied with Paolo Bancaro for a game most 6 dimes. This altered reject read action from the Warriors 2022-23 playbook has the two in Paul receiving a hammer screen as opposed to a flex screen, with Curry still of course rejecting that action. Making this particular play happen though, watch how Steph's body angle allows him to fend off both Batatse and Suggs for the finish. Given Jackson Davis is a fresh rookie, Trace has got to be better at making contact on slithery screen navigators like Suggs in order to open up as much space as possible for Steph. He does do just enough to open up a lane for Steph to attack downhill, which Curry attacks three quarters of and stops on a dime for the drifting back pull-up. This time a slip from Jackson Davis in the pick and roll forces Bancaro to help off Kaminga, who Curry hits with an off-handed scoop pass, and it's a lethal Congolese ravaging. Split action with Wiggins as the facilitator sees Looney set the cross on Harris to keep Curry's defender trailing him. With such being the case, Steph up fakes to get Harris out of position which also draws the help of Bancaro. Given A. Wiggins elusively pops to the top of the arc after being the split initiator, Steph's no-look dime sets up a W for a deep range bomb where he draws the end one. From withering through traffic before dropping over the shoulder no-lookers to the paint, to waiting for the play to develop before dropping his dime, to pitching quick-hitting outlets in transition, the quarterbacking was on point from Curry against Orlando. How Steph worked off the ball to masterfully gain leverage elusively on the catch was what allowed him to gain a scoring rhythm early. Once he saw a few drop through, it became scary hour for the entire city of Orlando. This would allow for the off-the-dribble sauce to shine through as three consecutive tweens catch Suggs leaning and it's another reckless magic closeout. Steph gets the and one, and you gotta love the home alone, Selly. Staying with the on-the-move wizardry, and this time it's a hezzy curry slide moving jab step back three-piece with a soda as Steph drains it with Suggs being late to recover. This double on-ball screen with pods and loons sees Curry split Suggs and Batatse to get downhill. An attack which has Batatse incorrectly guessing layup when switching onto him the next time down, as an inverted behind the back directly into a step back gets Steph enough space as he looks away before it falls through. The fact that he can casually do that is pretty insane. This 1-2 pick and pop with Curry as the screen setter leads to him jabbing on the retrieval before a hezzy tween hezzy combo freezes Suggs. Curry attacks Jalen's lead foot before gracefully floating it over the low man in Batatse, to which one of the night's hilarious sellies ensues. Man had a right to let us hear about it, as 10 of Curry's 36 came in the final quarter, which was produced on a bewildering 102% true shooting clip. As seamless as that film room seemed like it was for Steph, things have been anything but smooth sailing for Curry and the dubs as of late. Curry spoke on the instability of the starting five postgame. I know we're gonna keep experimenting because there hasn't been one look that's worked consistently, and that's just the situation we've been in all year. It's on us to play better, to play more physical, to stop fouling, give it up offensive rebounds, the simple things. The challenge is to stay locked in no matter what five-man kind of rotation is 
the coach puts out there. Steph also admitted to quote unquote being pressed a little bit over the last three games, but got back into rhythm after attacking the paint against the Magic. Clay Thompson would reveal that he had a deep conversation with Steve Kerr about staying positive and making the most out of his final years in the association. You have to respect the reflectiveness from the all-time great. Regarding Draymond Green's prolonged suspension, there's no update on a potential return, and Steve Kerr said post-game, quote-unquote, we've been giving him his space, he's been giving us ours. Meanwhile, since being reinserted into the starting lineup, Chris Paul has been revitalized over the past couple outings. First, the future Hall of Famer dropped 24-6 and in a loss against Dallas, and followed that up by draining all three of his triples in the most recent win over Orlando. Additionally, while Andrew Wiggins only scored 10, I thought my fellow Torontonian wore down the magic throughout the game with his two-way energy level, almost like he did when becoming a first-time All-Star with this franchise in 2022. From both Andrew Wiggins and Kevon Looney, I really love the energy I'm seeing as of late. Kerr might have found something off the pine with those two and Pajemski. Unfortunately though, as we talked about in my last Warrior video and continuing to be the case, the Warriors didn't receive the benefit of the doubt from the officials whatsoever. Kaminga was called for a flagrant foul on Franz Wagner, where he seems to make a play on the ball, while later in the game, Steph was racked in the head, but it wasn't even reviewed for a flagrant. Kevon Looney also had his jersey blatantly grabbed on this drive, but there wasn't even a foul called, as the same inconsistency the Warriors have been accustomed to with the officials again took place. In other news, Gary Payton II's injury was at an unfortunate time given it was just after he made an acrobatic layup following a JK block which gave the dubs momentum in the late third Q. GP2 had just returned after being out a month, and it's a tough blow for such a crucial piece to the Warriors puzzle to be this injury prone, yet well soon, young glow. Despite the loss of Draymond while also being without Gary for the most part since Green's suspension, the Warriors taking W's in 6 of their last 10 has consisted of a 5 game winning streak and a close loss on Christmas to Denver that could have gone either way. To be fair, the 3 game losing streak to those Nuggets along with 2 other contenders in the Mavericks and Heat were tough pills to swallow. That said, for as much flack as he receives from Dub Nation for not trusting young players, Kerr finally inserting a rookie in TJD into the starting five and trusting both Trace and Brandon as legit rotation pieces has been a pleasant surprise. Because along with Curry's aforementioned sorcery, it's Steve Kerr masterclasses that are going to have to drag the Dubs beyond middle of the pack in 23-24. Two shoutouts from my last upload and this one next time, but which lineup should be the Dubs starting five? in your opinion. I want to know your take, so let me know down below in the comments section. DFlow signing off.